So, this is the story of when my girlfriend wanted to go to Paris, so I took her to Kazakhstan instead. If you want to have future videos, please consider subscribing to the channel. I had met Bettina about half a year earlier. I had never really had a real girlfriend before, and this was a serious thing. Like, we had made each other's parents and, and all that. The next obvious step was figuring out whether we were compatible traveling partners. Traveling is something we both enjoyed and valued, but would we be a fit? She was organized and liked to plan, and I'm usually rather unorganized and mostly without any plans. When traveling with friends you can just be reckless and dumb, but with a girlfriend it's a different story. Well, the first step was figuring out the location. She suggested Paris, some say the most romantic city in the world. Not a bad idea, but I countered with Kazakhstan. Yeah, Paris has some of the most impressive art collections and best food in the world. But Kazakhstan was the second biggest republic in the Soviet Union and is the world leading producer of uranium. She was not exactly convinced that my suggestion was better as Kazakhstan might not have the best reputation around the world. And Burrard certainly didn't help. She suggested seeing the Eiffel Tower and sitting in a French street cafe. I told her Kazakhstan had parts of the dried up RLC with ships now just lying on the desert floor and that they drink fermented horse milk. I said it was much cheaper and better in every single way you could imagine than Paris. To be fair, I had heard it's a huge and diverse country with a lot of unspoiled nature and a variety of landscapes. Being in the middle of the old Silk Road, the Kazakhs, a Turkic people group of nomadic origins, should have a very interesting culture. Today it should be a fascinating mixture of futuristic cities, traditional villages, Kazakh culture, landscapes, Russian influence and the charm of Central Asia. And they say it's still not overrun with tourists. We didn't reach an agreement, but she did go home and look up a couple of videos of people traveling in Kazakhstan. And she started to get a bit curious about it and ended up agreeing to it. A couple of months later we were ready to go. The cheapest ticket we could find would take us from Copenhagen to Riga and then on to Almaty. There was a child behind us who had clearly not watched the videos of how beautiful Kazakhstan could be. Because he screamed the entire way and didn't seem thrilled at all about going there. I mean, give the place a chance before you complain, am I right? Traveling as a couple we of course had to get matching neck pillows. After clearing customs, our taxi driver gave us a great deal, but as soon as we began moving, the quote changed so we jumped out immediately and found a much better bus instead. Bettina liked to know at least a couple of hours before bedtime where we would sleep. Though this idea seems strange to me, if it made her feel safe, of course I supported booking a hotel in advance for the first few nights. When we got to our hotel, the lady running it told us that it was double booked and we could not stay there after all. We went back on the streets looking for a new hotel. We found a mall with free Wi-Fi, clean bathrooms and a sort of decent lunch, where we booked a new hotel online. The rest of the day we just spent seeing the city. We saw this big government building, this which looks like the headquarters of an evil supervillain and this pillar on an empty square symbolizing independence. Overall it's a very green city with a lot of trees and we really liked it. The metro looks quite fancy and it's an easy and cheap way to get around. There was some sort of graduation going on, so we congratulated the bright future of Kazakhstan. In the evening at dinner, Ban the waitress insisted that we should see the skiing resort of Shimbolak. She even gave us her number and offered to help if we needed it. She was very nice. The next morning we took a bus ride out the city and in just about half an hour we were in the mountains. Of course no one was skiing in the summer, but it was an awesome place. It almost resembled the Alps with small cottages. We trekked up on the slopes on the mountains as it began raining. The view was really beautiful and it was amazing how close to the city it was. Trying to get up as high as possible, we headed into the adjacent forest and just had fun hiking in the Kazakh mountains. <laughs> Around the resort we also met these nice dogs, who really knew how to enjoy life. There are a lot of malls in Kazakhstan. I'd guess they have more malls than citizens. Bettina bought the shirt which she was really happy about. We went out to dinner. No worries, we are of course aware of fine dining etiquette, such as always wearing googly eyes when eating out. Bettina likes art and that sort of thing, so we went to Almaty's art museum. We split up in the museum as we had different strategies, and it's not nice to say that you are better than your girlfriend, but she's a much slower museum guest than me. I mean, she wasted a lot of time stopping and looking at all the paintings, where I just rushed through all the rooms as fast as possible as a true expert. I did notice one thing though. After the road trip I can read the Russian alphabet, but I don't understand what I'm reading as I don't speak Russian. So I had fun reading the names of the artists of the paintings. 
I noticed one guy had painted almost every single thing in the museum. He had the most diverse style I had ever seen. And I had never even heard about this guy. Holst Maslow. Everywhere I looked it was Holst Maslow. I later looked him up and found out it just means oil on canvas, so he was no person at all. After a few days in Almaty we went to the train station and took a train that would just in 16 short hours take us to Astana, the new capital. We had our small coupé on the train. There are two things that can be done here. There is a door. We trust Twixfilm. Twixfilm is important. It is the Twix. The Twix. It felt awesome just sitting and looking out at the Kazakh landscape. Spoiler, a lot of it was flat step. There even was a small restaurant in one of the wagons. This guy kindly provided all the best Kazakh hip hop hits distorted through his phone speaker for everyone for free on the train. We woke up at 5 o'clock the next morning with the train arrived in Astana. A quick and oversimplified history lesson pronounced terribly. The city used to be called Akmoli. The Russian Empire renamed it Akmolinsk, but during Soviet time they changed their mind and went with Selenograd instead. After independence the name was changed back to Akmoli, and 20 years ago the city was still small and though Kazakhstan already had a great and functioning capital, namely Almaty, it was decided that Akmola should instead be the capital, so everything could be planned and built from scratch. Of course, Akmola is a silly name for a capital, so the name was changed yet again, this time to Astana. And here we are today. Well, as a planned city it's very modern and you see a lot of impressive show off buildings such as this pyramid, these glass filled skyscrapers, the world biggest tent, which has a mall and amusement park inside with dinosaurs, this big colorful ball with lights and of course this literal giant trophy they built. You know, the most necessary stuff. We made the mistake of looking at Google Maps due to the straight lines and we thought stuff were actually in walking distance when in real life everything was giant. The city was pretty cool, though it didn't feel completely done. In between the huge hotels and spawning venues, you still had small houses, shelters and undeveloped fields, not far from the center. Anyway, we went out to see the city. I sent a picture to my brother at home and pretended that I met Ronaldo. He didn't fall for it. Overall, when making this video, there's a lot of photos to choose from, since Bettina likes to take pictures. She took this one and I took this one. I'm not saying who's better, but we have slightly different styles. We also had a few couple photos taken with the giant tent in the background. The timing was perfect, as they celebrated Astana's 20 years anniversary with fireworks in the evening and a few concerts. We had some fancy looking dinner, which turned out to be spaghetti with horse. A tip for anyone when traveling with your girlfriend, or well actually any partner, you gotta give them candy floss sometimes. While waiting in the line for the candy floss vendor I made some silly faces which the kids found funny. The next day was Bettina's birthday. I had sneakily brought some secret flags from home and decorated the room before she woke up. By the way, it's not weird with the flags, it's, that's just how Scandinavian people celebrate birthdays. I had also organized a surprise Skype call with her parents back in Denmark. We went to see the president's house, not a small one. The president, Nur Sultan Nazarbayev, must have been very popular because they kept electing him for almost 30 years straight and named everything after him. Nazarbayev University, Nazarbayev Avenue, Nazarbayev Airport, Nazarbayev Center, Nazarbayev Square, and so on. I'm not joking, after we left the entire city of Astana was actually renamed after him. One way I had enticed Kazakhstan as the best destination was, I had told her that opera tickets were only a couple of dollars. And Bettina likes that sort of thing, so on her birthday we went to see a ballet. The building itself was pretty cool to see, and going there was a fun experience. I must admit, I honestly expected it to be a bit boring, but it actually ended up being... unbelievable boring. She liked it though, so that was good. The ballet dancers were very good at telling the story only using their body. I actually understood most of it. It was about some poor guys having to deal with some terrible pirates. Later, when we discussed it, she said the pirates were actually the heroes, and we had completely different ideas about what we had just seen. So we looked it up. Turns out the ones I thought were the heroes were actually evil slave traders. They say there's no wrong answers in art, but I was pretty off on this one. The next night we went to see another show, this time with different types of Turkic folk music, played with a variety of cool instruments. This one was actually very interesting. And we made it to Kazakh national TV. I guess my childhood dream of being a Kazakh TV star finally came true. Watching it, I noted I got a weird amount of close-ups. There I am, and now they film the lady performing for a few seconds, and for some reason, back to me. While in Astana, we also had to see their mosques. First there's this one, it's very big and impressive. 
Bettina was wrapped in this green thing. Next was Noah's Diner Mask, also very big and impressive. This time Bettina had to wear this blue thing instead. Astana was nice, but after some days it was time to get moving. Turns out most of the ships in the dried up Aral Sea had been stolen for scrap and were gone. But instead we had found some very cheap flight tickets to Shimkent in the south. We later learned the flight company was not allowed to fly in most other countries due to safety violations. And an accident after we left actually caused them to shut down. Anyway, a short flight where we once again could use our matching neck pillows, we landed safely in Shimkent. A mining town that grew into Kazakhstan's third biggest city. Lead and zinc is abundant, with over three quarters of all the bullets fired by the Red Army being mined there. A bit less skyscrapers and a lot hotter than Astana. After riding a few buses there, we were able to find the right one. The next day we decided to take a day trip to Turkestan. Transportation is mostly done with shared taxis and minivans, where you wait for it to be filled up and then it takes off. Turkestan is a small but ancient city in the Kazakh desert, best known for the mausoleum of Kocha Ahmed Yasavi. It's pretty cool and certainly worth seeing if you ever find yourself in the south of Kazakhstan. We met these women who were also seeing it for the first time. I by the way thought Bettina looked nice in this picture and posted it. But apparently quite a few thought she was Greta Thunberg for some reason. Just to be clear, she's, she's not. On the way back I took a couple of selfies of us, but Bettina woke up. After a long day we went for a big portion of borscht, the purple beetroot soup. I had told Bettina about my time as a Kyrgyz taxi driver or when I used to be a used car salesman in Bishkek, at least for a few hours. So we decided to go since we were close by. A crowded minivan took us to Sobris, a shared taxi took us further to the Kyrgyz border, and finally a short bus ride took us to Bishkek. It was cool being back. This monument was still there and the unfinished building I had climbed with Ty remained unfinished, though the abandoned nightclub had actually been torn down. We walked around Bishkek. I bought a flag and sort of began a small collection around this time. Anyway, here's a top 20 of things to see in Bishkek. The parliament building looks sort of cool. The National History Museum, where children were swimming in the fountains. Behind there's a big statue of Lenin, which is also worth a visit. Overall, there's quite a few statues, like this one, this one, this one and this one, especially of horses. Here they sell balloons, and they also sell a lot of paintings. I asked the sellers, Holst Maslow, and they said yes. You gotta see this mask, and this thing. I don't know if this cinema is famous, but I think it looks cool. There's this other park, which is also cool. This market with nuts and those things. These very organized bags of spices. This lady is selling some nicely stacked vegetables. This guy is selling some vodka. By the way, notice the cool shirt she bought in Kazakhstan. And finally the big candy section. We had fun in Bishkek, though one small minus was that Bettina was a bit nervous of the pack of stray dogs near where we live that followed us around. So I made up a story about them being just like Lady and the Tramp and just being out there living the good street dog life. You know, stealing a long string of sausages from the butcher and those sort of shenanigans. In reality, they were a bit more vicious and aggressive than I tried making them out to be. Kyrgyzstan has a big mountain lake, is a cool, so we went up there to live for some days in a traditional yurt, without having to move around all the time. Inside it was very cozy. In the mountains it was cooler and the landscape were rougher, but it was awesome, especially with all the snowy tops surrounding us. We didn't do much for those days other than some hiking and were just chilling. I began collecting some wood to make a fire on the beach, but somehow it disappeared. Hvor skal vi finde det henne? Du står og filmer mig godt, ikke? Du skal ikke filme det her. <laughs> Jamen, jeg var bare i gang. Jeg skulle lave en stram rapportage, og så begyndte du at snakke om brænde. Du kan filme en bunke med brænde, der ligger derovre. Mm, den der. Det ser ikke så imponerende ud. <laughs> anyway, life was nice. Just running in the sand, feeding the goats, as you say, and building my own private yurt. We had a lot of fun together. On our last night in the mountains, an old Kyrgyz man invited me for some vodka. We didn't have a common language, but he kept filling my glass. I went back to invite Bettina, who was sort of not drunk at all, and for some reason she didn't want to partake in this, and rather read her book. Back with the old Kyrgyz guy, things were moving very fast, and it sort of turned into a competition. It didn't take long for the bottle to be empty, and he insisted on more. In the end I had way too much, and went back to Bettina. She kindly asked if I was okay, and I insisted I was. Until 30 seconds later, when it all sort of came back up. 
The only thing I had next to me was Bettina's shirt, the one she was so happy about. This is, without a doubt, my absolutely least proud moment as a boyfriend. I really still feel like an idiot for it. I threw the shirt in the trash afterwards, as I had no way of washing it. The next day I felt terrible, as we began what ended up being an 11 hours long ride back to Almaty. Being hungover and feeling guilty about ruining the shirt was awful, but Bettina was actually very nice and didn't blame me. She even got me some bread to eat. It seemed as the driver was practicing for a future Formula 1 career with the most reckless driving we had seen there. Back in Almaty we saw some of the stuff we had missed, such as this golden mask, these posters of the president with smiling kids and the Soviet style building. The next day I went to the mall and I was able to find an identical copy of the shirt I had ruined. I bought it straight away. So I would consider myself boyfriend of the year for getting her such a nice gift. In Almaty they are really not lacking cool Soviet monuments, this park was full of statues and that sort of stuff. The Kazakhs are proud of their horses and their golden eagles, so for my birthday we went horseback riding. This guy showed us how. We tried explaining to him that Bettina already knew how to ride a horse with years of experience, but I had no idea as it was my first time. Yet he insisted he should not help me as I was a man. While my renegade horse did whatever it wanted, I had no idea how to start or stop. And even though I admire the bravery and free spirit of my Merrick horse, I didn't like when it decided to walk off the edge of a cliff. We also watched an eagle show, which is a show with eagles. In the mountains north of Almaty, there's this green mountain lake, which is quite beautiful. A lot of people were taking wedding photos there. We briefly spoke with a group of Indian men who were traveling together and understood well that nature is boring without some Bollywood bangers, so they brought their own. We had heard about an abandoned science lab a bit further up in the mountains, so we went there as well. The buildings were in a pretty bad condition and it was clear that nobody had been there for a long time. There were a lot of bottles with chemicals everywhere and a few bottles with what the scientists had been drinking. We looked around and saw some more science stuff, like these things. Overall I think it could need a bit of renovation or at least a quick paint job, but it was pretty cool to look around. Looking at the ground I found some centipedes. I don't really mind spiders, snakes or that sort, but I really don't like centipedes. So I decided to show Bettina what a tough guy I was by daring to poke them with a stick. It was 3300 meters up, so there was some snow, but we wanted more. So we climbed a bit higher up on the mountainside. We had fun making and throwing snowballs and skating a bit down. Even though this was before I began making YouTube videos, we did actually record some sort of review of Kazakhstan. Vi tager op hvor der er sne. Er det vinterferie? Er det sommerferie? Det der er en sky. Ingen ved det. Nej, der er sne. Der er ikke årstid her. Kun tid til at tænke. Jeg filmer sådan her noget fra op. Til Bastian. Okay, jeg filmer. Der er mange. Der kommer sådan noget. Wow, hold da kæft, film det, film det, film det. Det ved jeg ikke, man kan få det. Hold da kæft, wow. Okay, sådan nogle stenskred er rimelig seriøse. Fuck, jeg kan godt være, at det ikke er det sikreste sted, vi sidder. Nej. <laughs> Skal vi gå tilbage? Nej, for jeg, jeg har nogle, nogle fjollede ting, jeg gerne vil sige. Hvad er det? Vi er bjergget af hjertet. Ej, vi har taget en Uber heroppe. Vi er på bjergbestigning. <laughs> so, if the review was not clear, I strongly suggest visiting Kazakhstan. The next year we did actually go to Paris. We did see the Eiffel Tower, sit in a French street cafe, see some old paintings, eat a few snails, see some of the non-burned parts of the Notre Dame, and so on. It was all fun, but Kazakhstan was certainly more of an adventure. Thank you very much for watching. I'm still trying to figure out the direction for this channel, so please let me know what you thought of this video. Both positive and negative feedback is greatly appreciated. If you want to support the channel and future videos, you can grab a t-shirt at spaghettiroad.com. Our design with Kazakhstan is out now. Also a huge and sincere thanks to my Patreons, listed here on screen, whose support make this possible. You can also catch me on Instagram at Spaghetti Road Official. All the best, thank you.